Hello, hello. One of the things with being an extremely over-optimistic person with a lot of goals is that I tend to drop a lot of things that aren't urgent and at the top of my goals list. One problem is that I would always have these recurring goals of keeping in touch with friends, which I'd deprioritize, then feel guilty about because I was being a bad friend. So in order to combat that guilt, I decided to lean into this idea of seasons of focus, which I would call cave mode. And in a sense, it's a digital hermit mode where I just put on my noise-canceling headphones and chip away at my big goals in solitude. And I guess I've been drawn to these seasons of struggling by myself because they've always been the moments in which I've made the most forward progress. I just feel like I have a lot more control over my time and what gets done. So I did it to kickstart my training for Mount Everest and get into peak physical shape. I did it to learn how to code. I did it to advance my career as a software engineer, to learn web design, cryptography. I did it most recently as we were building ultra speaking and my first child was born. But I also realized that it's a hammer that I reached for far too often. And over the years, I've noticed that because of it, I have really stepped on the gas towards the loneliness epidemic that Dr. Vivek Murthy talks about. That doesn't mean I don't think it's a useful tool, but I think I've spent enough seasons in the cave. And this year, one of the underlying themes that I've that's been driving the year has been balance. In fact, one of my goals this year is to spend more time on my relationships. How do I foster deeper relationships with a few friends and tribes? So two remote and one local to the New York area. Both my relationship with my immediate family, my wife and kid, I wanna go on some trips with them, um, but also just keeping in touch with my closest friends. And um, one interesting thing that came up this week was a group of my close college friends saw my 2024 goals video. And I hadn't spoken to them for, you know, one to two years, I think closer to two years. And they started to absolute, absolutely hammer our group chat. And it was funny. One of the messages that came up was, Wow, he he wants to focus on his relationships. I I hope he picks us. So I immediately felt two emotions. Firstly, a lot of guilt because I'd been meaning to but failing to reply to their messages for 2 years. I honestly I had actually written a few drafts and just never sent them. But secondly, I felt excited to reconnect with old friends and hear about how they've been. And as you can imagine, the Update messages I sent were extremely lengthy. Um, my friends actually found out that I had a child through the video. <laughs> I'm a bad friend. But this feeling of having to send lengthy, meaningful messages is also the exact reason why I disappear during cave seasons. Because in my head, I always imagine that a message needs to be this big powerful thing, a mini project, when really quite often a uh, what up, hey, is more than enough or totally fine instead of, you know, these David Foster Wallace-esque essays. My plan is to be a bit easier to reach when I'm in cave mode because compounded over a lifetime, being completely unreachable much of my life while I'm in cave mode means that by the time I die, I may have accomplished all these things, but I'll be completely isolated. And as Christopher McCandless discovered towards the end of his great Alaskan misadventure, happiness is only real when shared. And I mean, I have to... I've never gotten to that stage. I haven't gotten to that stage of my life yet, 
but I can feel it and intuitively that resonates. So I'm going to do better this year with my relationships. If you're one of my friends and I haven't talked to you for a long time, I'm sorry. And I am working on it. So please bear with me. I hope that last quote wasn't too grim. And yeah, see you next week. Bye.